Going back to MetLife last year was quite a ride. Freshman year, we didn't accomplish what we wanted, but last year we knew like we had to get our thing together and bring something back home to Rutherford. Getting back there was definitely a harder challenge this year because everybody's coming for us. Coming off the first state championship in school history, they knew that we weren't, we weren't sneaking up on anybody this year. The bullseye was going to be on our chest. You know, the, the kids really have to respond to that. This season was our season to repeat. We did something that hasn't been done in about 50 years, and to do it again would be even more great. We were ready. The extra incentive for this year was that there was an extra game, and there was just another thing for us to win. So we just added another goal for us on our list. Going back to MetLife this year is going to be a big challenge because everybody's coming for us. We're not the small town Rutherford that was raised on nothing but hope, but we're now the powerhouse Rutherford football team that everybody's coming for, and we're coming for that repeat. Preseason more, was more the same this year, but for the fact that we had to defend a state title this year, it was a lot different. We had to work harder than we had ever worked before because not only were other people gunning for us, we, our expectations were a lot bigger because we needed to win a state title and that's the only thing we wanted to win. We opened up with official practice on August 8th. Coming to Rutherford, it was familiar faces. I grew up with everybody throughout middle school and when we were younger going to play football with them. So just like I left them for a little while, I came back, just regrouped with them. We had scrimmages against Hasbrook Heights, Mawa, Harrison, Snyder, and New Milford. During our last scrimmage, as we were getting so excited to actually start the season, I got tackled and fell right onto my collarbone. When I went to the doctor, they told me six weeks, but I was not letting that happen. Our first game was on August 31st, home against Manchester. The excitement leading up to the season opener was definitely different because you weren't in school, but everybody was ready for the game and obviously the dog pound was hyped for it because they are always, but our team was excited for it because it was Manchester and Manchester seems to always run their mouths before the game. The season started off strong as Kyle Russell hands the ball off to Johnny Mendes for a 74 yard touchdown. Up 21-6, Kyle Russell hands the ball off to Johnny Mendez again this time for a 50-yard touchdown. Johnny Mendez, four touchdowns on the day, and he would add his fifth in the third quarter with 12 minutes and 41 seconds left. We opened the season with the 41-21. to Week two, we traveled to Powell Park for our first road game. First drive again, Johnny Mendez was off running on a 56-yard touchdown. Most efficient attack was for a loss of five yards. They couldn't get anything going against our defense. Up 34-0 at halftime. How Park was looking to get on the board on our 41-yard line. They handed off to their running back, Regan Landrigan, knocks the ball out, forcing a fumble. He covers it and runs it back for a 60-yard touchdown. We got the shutout, winning 47 to nothing. So it was the first play of the game, kick return. I run to make a block and I get hit from behind by a teammate unsuspectedly and my knee goes inward, a hyperextension causing the injury and I go to the sideline. Well initially I didn't know what happened. We went to the next play and I tried running the post and Kyle thought he had me either way but I couldn't put any weight on my leg which was not good so I ran off to the sideline and the doctor checked me out and immediately he knew that it wasn't just a normal injury, that my PCL was like not in good shape due to the fall. When I told Coach Howell about my shoulder injury, it looked like he had saw a ghost. When I told him that I had heard it coming home from lunch, it looked like he wanted to strangle me. But I was only about for, out about for four weeks and the only the bad part about it was that I had to watch my teammates play the sport that I loved on my senior season. So, but I knew that I'd be back for playoff time and that's what the time that really matters in high school football. The next Friday, we were on the road again at Garfield. Evan Wool was getting the start under center. On our first drive, he led us down the field. He hands the ball off to Guzman for the touchdown to cap it off. We led 7-0. Third quarter up 14-0, Johnny Mendez takes him from seven yards out from his second touchdown of the game. We closed it out 21-6. Then we entered a big week, taking on our rival, Glen Rock. The game was also our homecoming game and senior night.
play in front of the home crowd is what gets me most excited because you have everybody there, the whole town's there, your family's there, and you just want to win for all of them. On the opening play, Kyle Russell finds Justin Finale downfield for a 68 yard touchdown. Johnny Mendez intercepts the ball on Glen Rock's first possession on third down. He returns it to Glen Rock's 10 yard line. Johnny Mendez finishes it off. We went it in six yards into the end zone to put us up 14 to run early in the first. We scored five times in the first half. It was a great day to be a Bulldog. We won 40 to seven. Beating Glen Rock all four years is big because Glen Rock has always been our rival, so going into that game, we just wanted to win. The next Saturday, we traveled to Midland Park to take on Walby. They got on the board first. Rashawn Markman found Ethan Kucharski for a 34 yard touchdown pass. We trailed 7 0. Later in the first, we forced a fumble and recovered by Jack Melford. That led to Johnny Mendez scoring on a one-yard rushing touchdown on the second play of that drive. He missed the kick. We forced a fumble to end the first quarter. The momentum started to swing. Russell takes it himself four yards up the middle for another six. We take the lead for the first time in the game. Nine minutes left in the half and wouldn't give it up. Johnny Mendez would dominate the rest of the game with two rushing and a receiving touchdown. We won 40-21. We ended our regular season at home versus Lodi on Friday, October 5th. A win would clinch our fourth straight NGIC Colonial Division title. On their first drive, our defense kept them out of the end zone and held the Rams to a field goal. As Lodi looks to go into the end zone, Johnny Mendez intercepts the pass and runs it back for 65 yards. Kyle Russell finds Connor Cahill for a huge game, putting us on Lodi's 34. Johnny Mendes hurdles over our defender and takes it off to the house and we're off and running. Chris Guzman recovers Lodi's fumble and we would get the ball again on Lodi's food. Johnny Mendes would score on the ground again, we led 15 3. Johnny Mendes would add three more second half touchdowns, a great 3 3 and also for me. <laughs> We won 41-13, and the regular season undefeated again. Then it was time for the NGIC tournament. After a week off, we would play New Milford in the semifinal again. Hasbro Kites was taking on Park Ridge in the other semifinal. Last year, we got off to a slow start against New Milford. We didn't want that to happen again. First play of the game on the kickoff, Johnny Mendez returns at 81 yards for a quick six. Johnny Mendez added a 17-yard touchdown run with 26 seconds left in the first quarter to cap a 50-yard drive. We were returning to the NGIC championship game after winning a 41-14. It would be a rematch with Hasper Kites. They beat Park Ridge 30-14. This year, the game was at their place. Going to the Heights game, there was a lot of excitement after what happened the year before. So a repeat had a lot of intensity and we were all hyped to play the game. The hype against Heights is always crazy, especially with last year, you could have saw how the way it ended. So going into this year made it especially special. Going to their fields, playing them, they're always a hard team to play, especially with their players, how they play, the fans. It's always a new game. Playing Heights is just something you love to do. It's from growing up playing RJF, it's like playing Lynnhurst Heights. They all bring out the best in you, so. That's why you love to play the game. I think we all went into the game thinking that we had it. 
we all knew what we were about and how hard we had actually worked for this. Growing up, we always had a competition with Hasbro Kites because us two were always the two best teams. Of course, the overtime win was on the back of everybody's mind, but we knew for if we were going to beat Heights, we had to be on our A game. So we were bringing it every day in practice. We scored first on a, on the tail solo event, 24 yard field goal. But our defense gave up four touchdowns in the first half. We trailed 28 16. Third quarter, we tried to start bouncing the comeback. Johnny Mendez ran it in from 10 yards out. We got the two point conversion, and we were down 35 24. But we couldn't stop Spencer Lee. He threw his fourth touchdown pass to put them up 48 to 23. <clears throat> Obviously, losing the Heights was unfortunate since we beat them last year in overtime in the NJSC championship. It was kind of heartbreaking to watch them raise the trophy on their field when I thought we deserved it, even though we played a terrible game. But honestly, I think the loss helped us. It humbled us. It showed that we weren't a perfect team and that no team's really perfect. And it stopped our streak. So we didn't have to worry about that anymore. And the only thing we had to worry about was getting to that state championship and winning it and bringing it back to Rutherford for the second time in a row. Though we lost the NJIC championship, we still had our bigger goal to accomplish. We were the top seed in the North 2 Group 2 bracket, and we played Central High School from Newark in the first round on November 2nd. First quarter, Johnny Mendez runs in from the 11 yards out. We were up 8-0. to zero. Second quarter up 14-0, Johnny Mendez was off in, running again, this time 60 yards for his third touchdown. He led 20 to 8 at half. Up 28-8 in the fourth, Regan put a 60-yard pass to Powell for a touchdown. We advanced easily 35-14. Round two had Mountain Lakes visiting on Friday. Up 7-0 in the first half, Riggs came down with a 35-yard reception from Jay Money for a TD. In the third quarter, Jay Money ran his third touchdown of the game and we led 26-0. Mount Lake started to come back. They scored three straight touchdowns. Our defense came up big. Chris Guzman with the interception. We held on to win 26-21. Back in the sectional final, and this time we got to host it. Lyndhurst upset Verona 37-34 in the other semifinal. Going into Lyndhurst was insane because they talked the most smack about any team we've ever played, and that just gave us even more motivation to go in there and just win. On Thursday, we were hit with a storm. We had a delayed opening on Friday. We had to wait until noon to find out if we were playing. I think the biggest hype for me was waiting for the Lindhurst game to find out if we were playing on Friday night or Saturday because this was my first game back. So when I found out in class that we weren't playing, I literally threw my phone on the ground. The game was against Lindhurst that ended up getting moved. Obviously, it is Lindhurst, so everybody was excited to play and we just wanted to play as soon as possible and we didn't want any momentum that we had to leave. And just that rivalry was just, we were waiting. The game got pushed back to Saturday afternoon. Let's go, baby. Let's go now, come on. Warming up for the state sectionals was a crazy atmosphere. Lynnhurst fans got there early, our fans were there early. Everybody was pumped up for the game. Everybody was talking before the game. They don't know what type of game they about to get into right now. They don't know. One, two, three, four. Let's go, guys. Where is he? Yo, our sidelines better be going crazy. Our sidelines better be going crazy. It's different today. Oh, y'all better be up. Y'all better be ready. Oh, y'all better be up. Y'all better be ready. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Turn it up. 
basically their entire student section showed up uh, in their bleachers just to talk some smack to us, but we weren't phased. Uh, Coach Howell reminded us that no team wins the game before the game, so we were just ready to go out there and dominate. Storybook oh, ending right here, right? Shut that door. You couldn't ask for a better ending, guys. Here you are in your third sectional final in four years, right, in your own house against you know who, guys. That's a cherry on top, man. You don't understand how lucky you guys are to be in this position, right? Okay? So here we are, right? Now you write the end of the story, fellas. You write the last chapter, it's in your hands. Well, however you want the end, is up to you right now. Let them talk. You do not win the game, all right, by talking. They've never been here before, but you have. You live here. This is an ordinary game for you guys, not for them though, right? This is nothing, right? Let it all build up, all right? You unleash it on the first play of the game. <laughs> In the first, we drove down the field quick. Johnny Mendez was tearing up their defense, having the drive with a 12 yard touchdown. Lenhurst answered through the air on an eight yard touchdown pass from Peter Partilla. In the second, Kyle Russell connected with Johnny Mendez for the 21 yard touchdown. But Lenhurst answered back with a 40 yard touchdown pass of their own. He trailed 14 13 at halftime. The message at halftime against Lindhurst in the sectional championship was very simple. It was to stop beating ourselves. Lindhurst was not beating us at, at that point, although the scoreboard did indicate that 14-13 we were down. However, we were just shooting ourselves in the foot. Johnny came in and was trying to do way too much. He turned the ball over twice. Kyle threw an interception. So out of our five drives in the first half, we, they didn't stop us, but we stopped ourselves. So it was real simple. We needed to settle down and to stop making mistakes and uh, you know, take care of business because we knew that we were the better team. We came out in the second half ready to take care of business. Johnny Mendez scored on a six yard run to give us the lead, 19-14. Right, in the fourth, up 25-14, Johnny Mendez punched it in into the end zone one more time. We won 32-14. When the final whistle blew, I was kind of shocked. I just looked for the rest of my team because I, I just wanted to celebrate with them. Winning our second state sectional title was definitely a great feeling because not only was it was the goal that we were hoping for and repeat, but it was a team that was right next door in Lindhurst. So it was just made it so much better because they were talking all the smack the week leading up to it and we just showed them that we're the better team that they can't beat us in football. Winning the first state title in Rutherford history was the most exciting thing ever. Just that feeling coming back that game after the dub, every, the whole community just being there for us, it was just great. But the, sec and the second time, honestly, not every student athlete is able to do it. And uh, knowing that our class did it, just, it was just like, it's hard to believe. There was more left to do because just winning the state sectional wasn't good enough. We wanted to go on and win the whole group. Obviously winning the section wasn't enough for us. We all came into the season with one goal and that was to repeat as state champions and this year would be the bowl game after the section. We would play Kittatinny in the first ever bowl game. They beat Newton 28-19 to win section one. Going into the game we didn't have a bye week and it was the week of Thanksgiving so it was a short week. We just watched a lot of film, went over game plans and got as much in as we can in a short time period. When we found out we were playing Kittatinny, I think everybody's first question was where the hell is Kittatinny? but we knew that this was their first trip in MetLife and this was also our third trip in MetLife. So we knew that they would be uh, stars in their eyes looking up at the stands, looking, wow, this is a crazy experience, but in Rutherford, it's our third trip. So we knew that it was business. It was just another game. It was just another game we had to win. 
And as seniors going out, we knew that we had to win this game. Preparing for Kittatiti, we didn't know much about them. We knew that they had a really good running back with a lot of rushing yards and touchdowns on the season, so we knew he was going to be a main focus on our game plan for the week. Walking into MetLife Stadium was so surreal. I definitely felt different from last year because this year I had a much bigger role and I was going to absorb every minute of it. It was like any other game, just there was a lot more seats there and we knew that we couldn't let that get to our heads and we had to play it and warm up like it was just a regular game. Saying all year long that this, that you're going to blink your eyes and the season's going to be over, right? And it feels like just yesterday we were preparing for Manchester on a hot August afternoon. Okay, well here we go, the blink of an eye, and look where you are again, fellas. Here we are again. Right? Now, right now, you have the opportunity of a lifetime, right? You have the opportunity of a lifetime. There's 19 seniors in here who have an opportunity to go out as a champion, right? Not many people can say that, fellas, right? But you have the opportunity of a lifetime. So how, what are you going to do about it today, right? And there's no guarantees in life, guys. There's no guarantees that any of you seniors are ever going to play this game again. This could be it today, fellas, the final chapter. And you know what, underclassmen, there's no guarantees that you guys are ever going to get back here again. All right? Now you got this whole entire community coming today for you, for you to put on a show. Alumni, future players, your friends, your family, everybody's going to be here today, guys. All right? And the bottom line is somebody in this stadium or a lot of people in this stadium are going to remember you, all right, based on your performance today. You will be remembered for a lifetime about how you play today, right? So what is it going to be, boys, when you come back here, right? When you come back into the high school years from now, what do you want to be in those trophy cases, huh? How many trophies do you want in there, right? When you walk into that gymnasium, what do you want it to say in the banners, fellas, right? What do you want? How many rings do you want to be wearing, guys? You know why? Because once you win it, they can never take that away from you, forever. You have that for the rest of your life. And you will remember it for the rest of your life, fellas. I told you back in the beginning of the year, you're the most unique team in, in school history, right? Because you got to defend a title. But well, we did that. Well, guess what? You're even more unique. You know why? Because you're the first team ever in the state of New Jersey to go out there and play in an inaugural bowl game, a true state championship. It's never been happened before. You're up first, fellas. What are you going to do, guys? What are you going to do? All you got to do is go out there and lay it on the line today, right? Play every single play like it's your last. Right? Play every play like it's your last. Every play like it's the play that's going to save the game. Right? And when you walk off the field, no regrets, guys. Play it for the guy next to you. Play it for the brothers in here. Right? Do it together and go out on top and send these seniors out on top. I love every single one of you guys. Let's go get that ring. Let's go! Kittatinny got the ball first and they handed it off to their workhorse, Jacob Mafaro, for five straight plays. He capped the drive off with a three yard touchdown to give the Cougars a 7 0 lead. But we answered in a big way. On our first possession, Johnny Mendez runs it from two yards out to get us on the board. That was the last we would trail on the day. After a four and out, we had it on the 12. Kyle Russell scrambles, breaks a few tackles, and gets into the end zone. Katie Tenney looks to answer. On third down, pass down the sideline is dropped. In the first quarter, I believe the score was 7 7 at that point, and uh, you know, it was a third and long. They ran a wheel down the sideline, and uh, we blew the coverage, but Guzman made an excellent job of uh, sinking underneath it and running with it, so it really wasn't his man, but he made a good play. And although he didn't actually swat the ball, the, the kid dropped it, but I think his presence there kind of uh, helped uh, you know, the kid drop the pass. Um, that was a huge uh, play in the game, obviously, because it was 7-7 at that point. They jammed the ball down our throat and scored first on us. 
Um, at that point, we were able to get the ball back and then take the lead, and we realized that we could really play with these guys and we could stop them, even though they had a lot of offensive weapons. After a fourth run, gave us great field possession. Johnny Mendes take his, takes a snap out of the Wildcat and pushes it in for his second touchdown of the day. We were up 21 to 7 after one. Second quarter, Kyle hits Connor on the 30 yard line and Connor splits the defense and takes it to the house. Then eight minutes left in the fourth, Justin Finelli catches a pass from Kyle Russell for the five-yard touchdown. We scored 55 straight points. We won 62 to 14. We are the first ever North Group 2 Bowl champions. Rushing on the field was one of the greatest feelings ever. It was also sad because I knew that this was my last ever high school football game. Once the whistle blew for the Kinnatini game, it was like a rush of excitement. Like you felt the rush like building up the whole entire time, but you know the game wasn't over and you had to wait till the whistle blew. But once that, you know, we got to like the two minute mark of the fourth quarter, me, Johnny, and Regan grabbed the uh, Gatorade jug and splashed Andy Howell with it. And it was pretty funny because like it was freezing out and I'm sure it was cold, but like I'd never done that before. I, you know, I never got the chance to do that and to do it with my two best friends. You know, it felt good. I think that, and then after the whistle blew, like everything was just exciting. Like you couldn't like even describe it. It was more like you're kind of just in a dream and you're living through it. It was awesome. After the game, me, K. Russ and Regan ran to the water jug and poured it all over Andrew Howell. Like, I never got the chance to do it, and I was, it was my only chance since we were up so much to be able to pour that all over him. Winning the first ever bowl game was a cool experience because it had never been done before, and it was just another goal in our path to the end of the season, and also it was another trophy, so there's that, and it was a pretty sweet trophy. I think the things that I loved about Rutherford football program was not only did it teach you how to be a great football player, but it taught you a lot of things off the field. You know, like it just taught, it taught me how to be a better person and how like when I'm pushed to my limits, I gotta keep going, I gotta get back up if I fall down. And you know, another thing that I loved about the football program was every day we'd go down there and we'd see the same faces and it's really like a family bond. Like we say it all the time, but it really is. Like, you know, the coaches will always have your back. I remember coach saying, you know, you're a part of this football program, I'm always gonna have your back. And you know, I think that means something. And all the other coaches, you know, they're always there to support you. They're always there to, you know, make everything better. And yeah, they get on you sometimes, but it's only to help you. Never thought I'd say this, but I'm gonna miss the crusty smell of that locker room, the air that came in there, the crusty practice field, just the environment in that locker room I'm gonna miss. That's what brought us all together as a family. Being a junior, I've been in this position now going to be twice, having to come off of the state championship season. Obviously, all of us work hard, but next year's a lot different because we do lose a lot of people. So the team's just gonna have to work a lot harder than we normally do and just rely on our coaches to direct us in the right way. I think that the 2018 Bulldogs was such a successful team because not only were we stacked, we've been playing together our whole lives, so we had so much chemistry together and it just helped us go farther. But being a Bulldog and being a Bulldog on the Rutherford football team, you have to be tough. That's one thing that Coach Howell always made us, made sure that we were. If we weren't the best, we weren't the most athletic, he made sure that we were the toughest team and we would never give up.